Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number 10 from the June 2018 International, well, it's not the International A-Level, this is the UK GCE paper, the A-Level paper from the UK. Um, this is the paper one, and this is from the actual A-Level exam, which this particular question is all about differential equations. And it would ref it would kind of like be um, corresponding to something that we would do in the IAL paper in P4. Okay, so this is like a P4 style question. All right, so it says the height above ground h meters of a passenger on a roller coaster can be modeled by the differential equation dh dt equals h times cosine of 0 0.25 times t over 40, where t is the time in seconds from the start of the ride. Given that the passenger is 5 meters above the ground at the start, start of the ride, show that h equals 5 times e to the power of 0 0.1 times the sine of 0 0.25t. So we've got to go from here to there. Okay, we've got to solve this differential equation with some of the information given here and find the particular solution, which is this. So solving a differential equation means getting rid of the dh part. So I've got to get rid of the dh dt and have an equation in the end as h equals some function of t, which as this is written here. Okay, so we got to show how to get from here to here. So these show that questions, it's very important that we show our steps very, very clearly to get the full marks. Okay, so show that, you can't just start off writing something and then write all sorts of rubbish in between and say, therefore, h equals this. No, you have to be very clear in your steps to get the full marks. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by differentiating, or we're going to start off, sorry, by solving this differential equation. Now, to solve a differential equation, um, a lot of people say, all right, this moves there and that moves there and all this kind of things going on. I like to understand what's going on in a proper way. So when we're solving an equation, what we know from grade whatever, like five, six, is that what, well, the way we should have been taught, if we were taught properly, is that what we do to one side of the equation, we do the same to the other. Okay, so when you're solving 3x plus 4 equals 7, for example, we know that we have to, in the end, end up with x equals. So we got to get rid of this 4. So we subtract 4 from this side, therefore we subtract 4 from that side. So we end up with 3x equals 3. We want to get rid of this 3. What's it doing? It's multiplying. So we have to get rid of this multiplication by dividing 3 on both sides. So we end up with x equals 1 as our answer, right? So what we did in each stage was we did the same thing to one side of the equation that we had to do to the other. So what we did to one side, we did to the other, and that kept the equation balanced until we got to our answer, which is the correct answer. Okay, we didn't, like, I didn't say, all right, this 4 moves across the magical equal sign and became negative. That's how some people think about it, but I don't like to explain things in that way because then it doesn't really make sense, right? And when you're doing maths further on, you will start having problems with, you know, uh, moving things around, which you don't know why, uh, you know, there's no mathematical basis for it, right? So similarly with solving differential equations, I like to think about it in a very similar way. Uh, I don't like this, H doesn't just suddenly fly down here and, you know, stuff like that. What's, what's happening here is we are basically solving this differential equation by integrating both sides with respect to t. I want to end up with h equals. So how do I get rid of this dh dt? I integrate it with respect to t. So this is going to be dh dt integrated with respect to t. But what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So I have to also integrate this side also with respect to t. So I'll have h times cosine of 0 0.25t over 40. That's also integrated with respect to t. Okay, now what you'll notice here is that these cancel out. And you're left with the integral of dh. Okay, so you have here the integral of dh equals the integral of, and here you have h times the cosine of 0 0.25 t over 40 with respect to t. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do something called separating the variables. All right. Anywhere it says dh should be where the h terms are. Anywhere where it says dt on the side that it says dt should be the side 
where the T terms are. So the cosine 0 0.25 T is in the right place, but the H is in the wrong place. So I've got to divide both sides by H. It will cancel from here and it'll end up with 1 over H on this side. So this is going to be the integral of 1 over H with respect to H equals, I'm going to take out this 1 over 4 T. All right, I'll take this out so that it's taken out of the... Um, I, like, I always say I like to take the constants out, and I'm left with the cosine of 0 0.25t with respect to t. Now, the next step here is what I like to do. A lot of people don't do this, actually. Right? I don't like to have plus c at the end if I can, if I can avoid it. Okay? So I'm not asked to find the general solution here. I'm asked to find the particular solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that they told us some information. They said that the passenger is five meters above the ground at the start of the ride. What does that mean? That means that h is equal to 5 meters when t is equal to 0. The start of the ride is when t equals 0. So I can use that information. I know that h equals 5 when t equals 0. So I want to find h in terms of t in the end. right? So I'm going to put them at the same level. And I know that h is 5 at the same point when time is 0. Okay, now that will help me avoid having to put plus c. I'll have definite integrals, and automatically c will be calculate, calculated within that. I don't have to put it out separately and then put the values in. When I put, when I integrate this and I put in these values, the c will automatically be taken care of in my calculation, which I, f I find that much more efficient. Okay, so now we can, we're ready to integrate. Everything's in the right place. We're going to now integrate both sides with respect to whatever we have to. So this side, 1 over h integrated with respect to h gives us lin of, we, we could put the modulus of h, but there's no need to here because h can't be negative. It's a height above the ground, and this thing is never going to go below the ground because the whole thing's above the ground. All right? So the roller coaster won't go below the ground. So you have lin of h, no need to put the modulus, and the limits are h and 5 equals... You have 1 over 40 times. Now, the integral of cosine of something is going to be the sine of the same thing. Not negative sine, the positive sine. Why? Because when you uh, differentiate the sine of something, you get cosine. Okay, so the integral of cosine is sine, right? But there's a function inside the function. So I have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 0 0.25. Okay, which is like dividing by a quarter, which is like multiplying by four, which we'll deal with in a minute. And we have our limits t and zero. So this is just, I've put this here to show that our answer in the end has to be this, just so it keeps it in our mind. Right, now I can substitute, now I can substitute the values in. In fact, what I'm going to do here, this is going to be lin h minus lin five equals, this is going to be, if you divide by a quarter, it's like multiplying by four. So this is going to be four over 40 times, and now I'm going to put the values in for this. That's the sine of 0 0.25t minus the sine of 0. Okay, so I've put the values in, and I've also, you know, divided by a quarter, so I've taken the outside as well, so that's 4 over 40, which is 1 over 10. So I've got lin of, I can now use the laws of logarithm, logarithm, logarithms, sorry, not logarithms, logarithms. Um, so I have the subtraction law, so this would be h divided by 5, equals, and this is going to be 4 over 40, which is 0 0.1. I'll write it as 0 0.1 because I see there's a 0 0.1 here. So far, it's looking good, all right? Times, and this sine of 0 is 0, so I'm left with just here, zero sine of 0 0.25t. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I think we're, we're there now, basically, because what I can do is I can use the fact that this means the log to the base like if I have log to the base A of B equals C, then this is the base, this is the power. So here the base is E. This is log to the base E. But it's not written there. That means lin N. Lin means log to the base E. So this is E to the power of all of that. So this means E to the power of 0 0.1 um, sine of 0 0.25t is equal to H over 5. So the final step would be to say H equals exactly this. Just multiply by 5. 5 times e to the power of 0 0.1 times the sine of 0 0.25t. So we can see that it's exactly the same as what we had to show. So we know that we're correct. 
Okay, so that's a nice neat way of avoiding putting plus C. We see that here we have to find H in terms of T. Okay, and we know that when H is 5, T is 0. So we can put H and T on the same level, 5 and 0 on the same level, and we end up with our answer without having to put plus C. It's automatically incorporated in our answer. All right, so there's the answer to part A. Then it says, state the maximum height of the passenger above the ground. So we got to think is, what is the maximum value that this H can be? Now, in many cases, we have to put T as a really huge number, and then we'll find out. But in this case, no, because the value of this fluctuates. It's like a, a you know, sign. So it doesn't like keep increasing. So the value of this fluctuates between minus 1 and plus 1. So you've got to think that when the sign of 0.25t is a maximum, okay, when it's the highest possible value, when the whole of this is the highest possible value, then this will also be its highest possible value. So it's when this is equal to 1. When this is equal to 1. So you have 5 e to the power of 0 0.1 times 1. Okay, so that's the maximum height. Now, do we leave it like this? I don't think we should. I think we should actually find out its value. So what we'll do is we'll round it to 3SF. It doesn't tell us what to do, but we'll round it to 3SF. So I'll do 5 e to the power of 0 0.1. And what does that give us? That gives us 5.5258. 5.5258 continues. So we can say 5.53 meters. It's in meters. H is in meters. Yeah, meters. H meters. Okay, good. All right, so there's your answer to part B. Now for part B, part C, sorry. It says the passenger reaches the maximum height for the second time. T, capital T seconds, after the start, start to the right. Okay, so the second time. Now, find the value of this time when it reaches the capital T. So we know that the maximum height occurs, okay, when the sine of 0 0.25 T equals 1. Okay, we, we deduced that in the earlier part of the question. Right now, we want to find when it reaches this a second time. So we can say when t equals t, capital T, we can say the um, okay the passenger reaches the maximum height for the second time. We're going to reach the maximum height the second time. So we're going to write sine of 0 0.25 times capital T equals 1. If you take the inverse sine of 1, you're going to get pi over 2. Now, why am I using radians? Why am I not using degrees? Well, we had to integrate to get to this expression. And when we use um, calculus, we must always, in trigonometry questions, we must always deal in degrees. Because the relationship of sine theta the differential of sine theta being cosine theta and vice versa is only true when the angles are measured in radians, not in degrees. Okay, so that's the reason why we must deal with radians when we have integrated. Okay, so because this is the result of integrating something, the angles, any angles must be measured in degree, in radians, not in degrees. So that's why I'm using degrees. Now, this would be the first time it reaches maximum. Now, if you think about the sine curve, it looks like this, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, well, pi over 2, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, okay, so that's pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, okay, then at this point it reaches the maximum again, so this is pi over 2, and the next time it reaches its maximum is going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, so it's going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, that's, what, that's the one we're looking for, the next one. That will be the first time, this will be the second time, and this T is for the second time. So you're going to say 0 0.25, 0 0.25 T. Let me just make that neater, sorry about that. So 0 0.25 T is equal to, that's 4 over 2 plus pi over 2, that's 5 pi over 2. Okay, so you got to, this is like a, a quarter T equals 5 pi 
over 2. So t is equal to 4 times 4 times 5 pi over 2, which is 10 pi. So t is equal to 10 pi seconds. And of course, we'll write this to 3SF. Um, so 3.142, okay, times 10, 31.4 seconds. Okay, that's, we can write pi, we know it's 3.14. Okay, so if we're writing it to 3SF, this will be t equals 31.4 seconds. And that completes this question. So if you are not sure why we didn't use degrees, well, that's the reason, oops, what am I doing? That's the reason why we didn't use degrees. Okay, we didn't use degrees because we measure in radians when we are dealing with calculus. So if you differentiated something to get an expression or you, um, or you integrated something to get an expression, you must always keep it in radians, okay? If you use degrees, the time would be some ridiculous time anyway. We like, you would end up with this being like 540, is it? 360 plus 90, that'd be 450, 450 times four, it'd be like some huge number, number of seconds. A roller coaster doesn't take that long to go around, right? So it doesn't even make sense anyway. But what's the reason? How do I know for sure we're supposed to use radians? Well, because we had to integrate to get this. So if you differentiate and integrate, you must always deal with radians, not with degrees when you're dealing with trig functions. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. But other questions from the topic of differential equations from P4, you can find them in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can find videos which will, um, you know, or you will find a video here, if you click on it, which will teach you how to use my channel um, in an efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.